up back here, Ninja Kid fam. We are going to show you how we made this pull-up station. Hold this. Okay. Did we tell you it's interchangeable? We first started off with a two foot by four foot sheet of three quarter inch oak plywood. This was easier to get into the car rather than buying a full sheet of plywood. First we painted it black so we didn't have to paint around obstacles once they were on the board. The kids love to be involved so I try to find tasks that they can help with as well. This project requires only a one foot by four foot sheet so we actually ripped it down in half on the table saw. We built a French cleat system on our garage to hang obstacles on. I'll put some links down below showing you how we did that and the other obstacles we built. So when you're cutting the French cleat, you set the table saw at a 45 degree angle and rip the board down in half. We use a two by six. So then we end up with two French cleats that we can then attach to either obstacles or the wall. In our case, we'll be using them for two different obstacles, one for this and one for an upcoming project. A quick tip I heard when we first started building the French cleat system was to take the edge off of the French cleat. You'll keep the one on the wall, but on the obstacles, you'll kind of take that little edge off and that helps so it doesn't dig in quite so deep against the wall. To attach the French cleat to the obstacle, we used glue and two inch lag screws. And to build the pull up bar, we used a three foot threaded pipe, two T's, four four inch threaded pipes, two caps, and then two mounts. We quickly put it together so we could kind of get a sizing and spacing of everything. And then we also grabbed our rock climbing holds. When picking out the holds, we spaced them out. We figured we needed about six to span the 48 inches. We tried to pick some out in pairs. So two easy ones, two medium ones, and two hard ones. Since we are using the screw on holds here, you can't just screw those right into the plywood itself. So you have to have a board behind it. This works out great for our setup since at the bottom of the obstacle, you need to put like a two by four or something similar to match the French cleat at the top of the board. Once we had the spacing, we marked the holds and began mounting the pull-up bar. I could tell Ben was really enjoying trying to figure out a layout for this. It was fun watching him before I even like showed him a vision of what I wanted to do with it. Once we had the spacing, we marked the holds and began mounting the pull-up bar. For this we used quarter inch, three inch long carriage bolts that feed in from the back. These go all the way through the French cleat, the plywood, and the bar mount. This side profile shows you how it's all laid out. The French cleat is running across the top with the carriage bolts through it, and the 2 by 4 spans will cross the whole bottom to not only allow the climbing holes to screw into, but also the support against the wall. Before we got too carried away, I wanted to see what kind of force it put against the French cleat on the wall. So I put the bar up on the wall and just kind of bounced on it a little bit. For reference, I'm about 155 pounds. The wall mounted cleat system doesn't actually budge at all, but you can actually see the two 45s pull tight together. So when we were attaching the holds, we first put in one screw and kind of kept it a little loose. Holds can look however you want. So we wanted to just kind of be able to spin those around before we just put two holes in. Once we had all the holds attached, there still looked like too much dead space. So I ended up adding some T-nuts in between those other holds. This will allow us to interchange different kinds of holds. So we drilled the hole and then we used a 7 16 drill bit for that. You want to go just smaller than the half inch. So it's a really snug fit. You don't want to just pound these in with a hammer because that could warp all the threads. So what we did is we used a bolt with a board and some washers. And then what you do is you put it down and it actually will suck that T-nut right into the hole. We only had five to do, so I wasn't too worried about doing this with my hand. But if I had much more to do, I'd probably use some kind of drill or impact gun to speed up that process for sure. You just have to be careful not to blow out the hole using an impact gun or something like that. For now, we'll mostly keep these wall-mounted cannonballs up, but this allows us to change to any kind of other climbing holds we want. So this will be a great training tool going forward. We can interchange of these. For us, the number one thing was getting a pull-up bar out there. So that's kind of what started this project. And I'm really excited how it turned out, having you know six different holes screwed on there, and then five adjustable holes that we can interchange. This gives us different obstacles you can go across. If this is your first time here, we hope we can earn your subscription or a share. We are here to encourage, educate, and engage you to go out and accomplish your goals. If you have a chance, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and then right next to it, there's that bell. Go ahead and hit that. That'll make sure that you get notified whenever we post a video. Now go and build your own obstacle, and I hope yours turns out even better. See ya!